Welcome back to The Deep Dive. Today we're really digging into something important, uterine fibroids. But uh, not just the condition itself, we're looking at this huge shift, almost philosophical, in how we treat them, moving away from just, you know, surgery is the main answer. Yeah, absolutely. It's a massive change in women's health. Yeah. Because fibroids, well, they affect so many women, up to 80%, actually. Mm -hmm. And the symptoms can be really tough heavy bleeding, pelvic pain, sometimes fertility issues. Right. And what's so revolutionary now is that these newer options, they really focus on preserving the uterus, preserving fertility. It's a move beyond hysterectomy being the sort of default for severe cases. Okay, let's unpack that a bit. The upsides of these non-surgical methods, they sound pretty compelling. They really are. We're talking procedures you can often have done as an outpatient, uh, recovery times that are much, much quicker, fewer complications generally, and keeping fertility options open. That's huge. It is. And there's data backing this up. Like one figure I saw mentioned 79.3% of women reporting significant symptom improvement. That's not just a number, right? That means getting back to life, work, family without major surgery. Exactly. It's genuinely life-changing for many, offering real relief without that level of invasiveness. It uh, fundamentally improves quality of life. It redefines what living with fibroids can actually look like for you. So let's get into the specifics, because this is where it gets really interesting technology-wise. First up, MRI Guided Focused Ultrasound. MRG FUS. Sounds very high tech. It is. It's cutting edge stuff. Basically, you're inside an MRI machine, which gives incredibly detailed images. Okay. And then uh, high frequency sound waves are focused really precisely onto the fibroid tissue. These waves generate heat, which destroys or ablates the fibroid cell. Without cutting anything. Exactly. Completely non-invasive. The MRI guidance ensures only the fibroid is targeted, leaving the healthy uterine tissue untouched. It's incredibly precise. Wow. And the results. Pretty impressive. You mentioned that 79.3% symptom improvement figure earlier that's often linked to MRG FUS. Plus, studies show about a 13.5% average reduction in fibroid volume. And the key advantages are? Well, no incisions, clearly. No general anesthesia needed. And crucially, there are documented cases of successful pregnancies afterwards. Plus, the procedure itself is often quick, maybe 45 minutes, and recovery, typically just 24 hours. That's amazing. Okay, so that's one approach. What else is out there? Well, another really established and effective option is uterine artery embolization, or UAE. This works differently. How so? Instead of targeting the fibroid directly with heat or sound, UAE aims to cut off its blood supply. A specialist, usually an interventional radiologist, inserts a tiny catheter, typically through an artery in the groin, okay, and guides it to the arteries feeding the fibroids. Then they inject tiny particles, embolic agents, that block those specific blood vessels. So you starve the fibroid? Essentially, yes. Without blood flow, the fibroid tissue shrinks and dies off. The results are really good. Studies show around a 52% reduction in fibroid size, nearly 70% reduction in volume, and patient satisfaction is high. About 95% report better quality of life after a year. And fertility, ovarian function. That's a key point. UAE is known to preserve ovarian function well, and generally it doesn't seem to compromise future pregnancy outcomes, which is vital for many women considering their options. Right, so we have these targeted procedures, but what about medications? Are there new developments there too? Oh, absolutely. This is another huge area of progress. We're seeing these uh, game-changing medications, specifically a class called GNRH antagonists. But like Elagolix, Relugolix. Exactly. Those are some of the main ones, including Linzagolix too. They work by sort of dialing down the body's production of estrogen, which is what fuels fibroid growth. But doesn't lowering estrogen cause menopause-like symptoms? That's the clever part. They're often given with what's called ADVAC therapy, low doses of estrogen and progestin. This basically counteracts most of those potential side effects, like hot flashes or bone density loss, making them suitable for longer term use. Okay, that makes sense. And it's a big deal. Relugalix, combined with ADBAC therapy, for instance, is now FDA approved specifically for managing heavy menstrual bleeding caused by fibroids. It offers a real long term medical solution for many. Are there any other options worth mentioning quickly? Definitely. We shouldn't forget radiofrequency ablation, RFA. Similar in principle to MRGFUS, it uses heat to destroy fibroids, but delivers it via radio waves, often through small probes inserted laparoscopically or transvaginally. Very effective for symptom relief. Okay. And uh, while they don't shrink fibroids, progesterone-releasing IUDs like Marina can be incredibly helpful for managing heavy bleeding, which is often the most debilitating symptom for many women. 
So you see the toolbox is getting much bigger. It really seems like it. So with all these different approaches, MRG, FUS, UAE, new meds, RFA, IUDs, how do you, the listener, figure out what's right? Well, that's where careful consultation comes in. It really depends on individual factors, things like, you know, the size and location of your fibroids, what your main symptoms are, and critically, your plans for future pregnancy. Right. There's no single best option for everyone. Precisely. But the unifying theme here is effectiveness and safety. Hmm. Across these non-surgical methods, we're generally seeing high success rates, often 80 to 95% symptom improvement, and really quite low complication rates compared to traditional surgery. So the core message really is you do have options. Effective fibroid treatment without surgery, without necessarily resorting to hysterectomy, it's genuinely achievable now. It empowers women with real choices. Absolutely. Perhaps this raises an important question for you listening. Considering these powerful advancements, these diverse tools we now have, how will you empower yourself with this knowledge? How will you engage with your doctor to explore all these possibilities and really co-create the best health journey for yourself, for your future? It's about taking control and finding that personalized plan.